before we get started on today's video, I just wanted to remind you guys that our Mustang sweepstakes ends in just a couple days. At the end of the month, we're giving away this beautiful 2020 Mustang GT. And every dollar you spend on Throttle.com is an entry to win this thing. If you're a VIP member, every dollar you spend is five entries to win it. If you aren't already a VIP member, I highly recommend signing up for our VIP program. You can shop your favorite car parts or even our apparel, which you can see here, this is our new drop fresh new stuff so if you don't already have this definitely head over because every dollar you spend on merch is also an entry to win the cup today only we're actually doing a buy one get one free on our jet tags so use promo code bogo tag when you check out and you're gonna get two of these for the price of one the bogo tag sale ends at midnight not only are you gonna win a car but the winner is gonna actually get to spend a day here at the throttle shop hang out with the team before you take your car home it'll be an epic day good luck to all you guys now let's get into the video Welcome back to the Throttle Channel. As you can see here, I'm sitting in the Freak. I got my boy Ricky with me behind the camera. So you know we're up to no good. And I got Quinn, I don't know what he's doing. Doing nothing like always. <laughs> so we're gonna move right along. As you can see here, we've got the floor pan out that we built out of aluminum sheets. This is basically the loop side of Velcro with sticky adhesive backing. And I'm actually applying that to this frame in between all the nut certs because big sheets of aluminum can become quite noisy uh, if they're not dampened. So we're using this as a damper. Also adding some uh, sound deadening on the bottom of those panels as well, so sourced through our friends over at Metro. These should be nice and quiet once they're installed. Uh, Ricky is working on getting the panels painted black. So we should be able to bolt these in here very shortly. All right, so what I have going on right here, I have uh, the, the aluminum sheet metal that uh, Nikki was talking about. And I actually have just a scuff pad and I'm uh, sanding it down so the paint can actually grab onto something. So I'm gonna scuff the whole thing, then I'm gonna shoot it in black and then it's going back in the car. I'm over here, I don't know if you guys remember this, but this is the Wilwood pedal kit. And I actually grabbed this 2K Jet Black spray can and this thing is pretty, pretty sick. Look how glossy this thing turned out. And I didn't even show, I was just testing it, but man, this is no clear coat, this is straight. Using one of these cans by itself and man, this thing turned out amazing. So now it's time for me to put everything back together and start uh, prepping it inside the car. Tying out the bolts from under the dash that holds the wheel wheel pedal and make it sign out the ones in the other side of the firewall. Uh, next thing is gonna be the pedal. So I'm gonna go away down there. You're probably not gonna be able to see me. I'm gonna install this and then I show you the finished result like this. There it is. I don't know what Quinn is doing. I'm doing timing cover stuff. Hey, for the Civic? Yeah, let me see. Yeah, see me two-piece timing cover. So we got the front timing cover, oil pan and valve cover off of the K20. The inside of the engine looks actually fairly normal, which is a good sign. It means it's in good shape. So nothing really abnormal. We do have some regular wear on the lobes on the cams. Um, the chain, chain guides, all this stuff seems to be in really good shape. Usually when this starts coming apart, it'll start cracking and doing all sorts of bad stuff. Unfortunately, we had a pretty rough time getting the crank pulley off because it was on so freaking tight. What happened is we got this huge big wrench thing that kind of goes on the front. So it has like an Allen key socket that's that size that it goes on and holds it. And then you can get a wrench in inside that, bust the crank bolt loose, which works fairly well. But Ricky immediately puts it on and spins the motor backwards. It's not a good thing. And it made a clunk sound. So I'm like, oh, here we go. And sure enough, there's our timing mark. 
little dot pointing at an arrow and these two lines are supposed to be pointing at each other so one of our cams jump timing on Ricky's little stunt. Thanks, Ricky! I don't know if you can hear me. He doesn't know jump timing yet, but it's his fault. So now we gotta retime our drop-in motor, which actually isn't gonna be that big of a deal. We have a upgraded tensioner. Where is it? Timing chain from Hybrid Racing. This engine is just gonna have so many fun parts. Beautiful little unit that's gonna replace our factory one. So this is gonna go in anyway, so I'm kinda have to break timing anyways to upgrade some of the stuff but it shouldn't be that big of a deal. It will be very nice, and then we'll have a motor that runs very well. So we're pulling this off to install our Skunk 2 timing cover, which is super wicked. It's actually a two-piece aluminum cover, which looks super nice compared to the factory one. And I like that they actually designed this in two pieces as opposed to a single piece. That makes it a lot easier to work on. Kind of the whole idea that I see with the two-piece cover is when you pull your cylinder head off, you can send your front cover in to be machined with the head so it'll fit better. When you start decking heads on a single cover like this, you can run into fitment issues because the cylinder head shrinks even if you cut a few thousands off and you could have bolt holes that don't line up and then your valve cover gasket will kind of get pinched and it won't line up against the top of the cover there. So super cool design by Skunk 2. This thing is going to be a lot of fun to put on and it's going to look beautiful on the front of our motor. We got a new chain tensioner on. We're timed, we're timed. As long as Ricky doesn't spin the engine backwards, we should be fine. I'm more, I'm more concerned about that happening when the motor's in the car, because when the motor's in the car, then it's gonna be a lot harder to fix than right now. Note to Ricky's self, don't spin the engine backwards. Hybrid racing tensioner on there. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It went on really nice. I actually bad, like. Uh, it's too bad you don't see it. It's a beautiful car. A lot of the factory um, tensioners like this one, they'll just have. It looks like a paperclip spring. Yeah. This one actually had like a threaded. Um, oh, a bolt in there. And yeah, it was pretty sick. To keep the tensioner from popping out. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Yeah, beautiful piece. It is much and it's got, looking. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's got part. it's got clamp arms uh -huh. on the top and on the bottom on this one. Oh uh, okay. So a lot, yeah. lot stronger piece. Yeah, it's way more robust, huh? Yeah, killer. Looks good too. It's nice that they take the time to make the part look nice knowing you're never gonna see it after you install it. So yeah. shout out to Hybrid Racing. They, uh, actually they're great guys. If you guys are building a Honda and you uh, have a chance to use the uh, Hybrid Racing parts, I highly recommend it. Their stuff's very, very nice. Well thought out and well designed. And uh, everything we've had from them so far has been great. So thank you guys. Oh, this, hey. This be our front main seal kit. That's what we've been so, waiting on. Yep. And we can put our beautiful time to cover. Heck yeah. working on the stuff on the interior, all the detail stuff. Ricky is working on the valve cover and Quinn is working on the engine as you guys saw previously. Ricky's gonna go ahead and mount up our Dash 10 bung fitting. Bung. Bung, B-U-N-G, really B bung. Ricky's gonna drill some holes, pop those bad boys in and Evan will come out and do some aluminum welding. That way we can have a catch can that's going to allow all of the uh, crankcase pressure and ventilation 
as well as any blow by uh, out above the windage tray and over to our catch can, uh, which is coming from Track Tough and uh, is a beautiful piece. So we want to do it justice, make sure we do a good job mounting these dash tens on here and uh, get the plumbing done right. Fit in there now? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Killer. All right, so Ricky and Mickey got the valve cover prepped. I'm going to be tack welding these little bungs here, these AN fittings for the catch can setup. So actually, I've always wanted to do this. I've never done this on any of my cars, but it looks pretty straightforward. And these fittings are actually designed for this purpose exactly. So they're really shallow on the other side. And Ricky's done a really nice job prepping this surface. So just gonna tack them first, make sure everything is good. Ooh, watch yourself. And then we're also gonna plug this little hole here. This is for the factory crankcase setup. We got a little plug here. We're gonna tack this on, then cut it, and then we're gonna grind this nice and smooth. So it's gonna look really, really nice. Here we go. just got done throwing some filler primer by 2K. Now I'm gonna let this sit overnight. I want this thing to be completely dry. After dry, I'm just gonna sand it down, smooth it out, clean it, and then I'm gonna begin to start throwing the uh, actual color of the uh, ball cover. It is the next day and today I'm actually gonna finish tackling the valve cover. And the base coat for this is gonna be white. So we're gonna spray with some white paint. We'll go to the actual color app right after. See, it is so white, like bright white. That's the thing, the base coat must be perfect, and I've said this a bunch of times, and you guys guessed it right, the majority of you guys, it, the valve cover is gonna be floral yellow. In order for the floor to turn out the way it looks, the white has to be perfect, the base coat. So, took my time, did it quite a few times. Then I sanded it down so it can have a very smooth surface, and then now I think it's time for me to start spraying. So I just got done buffing the uh, valve cover and polishing it. So we took most of the trash out. Obviously you don't want to go too in depth with it because you don't want to uh, ruin the chance of uh, taking some of the clear core off. But so far so good, you guys can see. Looks pretty good. That is and insanely bright. Looks kind of that looks killer. Uh, now next we need to put the hardware. Uh, oh, I think Mickey got some aftermarket hardware, so. Hey, looks good, boys. All new gaskets from Honda to seal this thing back up so we don't have any oil leaks, which is paramount to me. And the boys here, we also got, we also got a nice little um, stud kit, studs that have male connectors on them. And we're gonna go to a female style, which will have a nice flush look. So this long block is turning out killer. So we talked about the timing cover, all beautiful two-piece skunk two kit, and then we upgraded the fluid damper. So we switched out the stock crank pulley for this beautiful unit. So this thing is gonna ensure that we have good harmonics at high RPM because we're gonna be running this motor hard and just good insurance and it looks beautiful and it complements the cover really well because it has a very nice new aesthetic to it. Alright, 
so it's much later in the day and I actually been painting everything we have for the car uh, all that is painted that's painted we have parts I mean the engine the transmission bunch of painted parts uh, tomorrow I'm gonna come in I'm gonna start shooting the clear on it that way it doesn't just scrap away whenever we're messing with it so see you guys in the morning all right, so now we've got the engine on the crane. We're gonna start throwing the clutch and flywheel on. Um, we are running a Honda S2000 transmission, so it's an F-Series transmission onto a K-Series engine. So we got a beautiful conversion flywheel, which will allow us to run an S2000 clutch that will match the transmission onto a K20 block. We've got brand new Honda hardware. This thing's gonna be super nice. for the Civic outside. I'm gonna put the subframe out with Quinn and then we are gonna mount the subframe to the engine and then we're just gonna drop the engine, the car on the engine, pull it down and then we'll have an engine in the car. seals with a steel cap right. and then a acorn nut on top so that's the bolt this would sit in there seal around that and then you have and an acorn the cap nut. goes on top Got right you. so what we replaced it with was basically this but without the stud it's, it's a female version ah gotcha and then nice aluminum spaces with a rubber grommet and a, a flush mount and we have yeah. these ah. way cleaner look once it's all tightened down I think it does look like just regular yellow. Yeah, oh yeah, in the camera, yeah. Ooh. Wow, that looks sick. Damn, that looks familiar. It's a little throttle, uh, throttle sticker there. Um, Dang, who welded that? Dang. <laughs> it's cool to see this thing in the car. <laughs> Okay, well the motor is in and those of you with a keen eye probably noticed that this isn't the intake manifold that we had on the car initially uh, when we started these videos for you guys. Uh, if you've been following this series, you know that we had a Skunk 2 plenum that we were going to be running. It was going to require a lot of modification in order to make this configuration work with our water passage, alternator, as well as our tensioner pulley. Now that we have this K-Power intake manifold, we can actually go right back to the K20A2 water passage, alternator, and tensioner system and run this thing as though it was configured for the car that it was actually gonna be in. The K-Power product is a really nice bolt-on product for rear-wheel drive applications on the K-Series engines. And what it does is it actually lifts the plenum higher and pushes it back a little bit. And it allows you the room you need in here to put all the factory componentry back on the engine, which for us saved a lot of time and hassle and fabrication. Huge shout out to K-Power. This is a great product. If you guys are in the market uh, doing any sort of K20 rear wheel drive swap, whether it be in an E30, a Miata, I know a lot of you guys are doing rear wheel drive K-Swap, so K-Power is the way to go. All right, well that's gonna be a wrap on today's video, but let's do a quick overview of what got done. We got a bunch of the trunk stuff back, and now you guys know we did all this fab work before this car went off the paint. So putting it back together has been fairly quick, but we wanna take our time, and we also had a lot of painting and stuff like that to do, like these panels were just raw aluminum. So Ricky went ahead and sprayed those out. We started putting our downstar hardware back in, but everything is just sort of popped in and kind of mocked up for now. We got some of the interior back in, which we're slowly squeezing in as we go here. Uh, we did get the fuel safe 
lay fuel cell back in. We've got our clear tube for filling the fuel. Got our Optima battery in here with the, the battery tray that Ricky manufactured. And I brought in this cool old school Gen 1 Mugen rear strut bar that was for my EG, but I've never wanted to cut the rear panels on the EG. So we're gonna use it in this car because there's no rear panels. It turns out to be the world's most expensive battery tie down. Check this out. So that's holding our battery in place. Turned out perfect. Let's move around to the front of the car. As you can see, I actually applied the uh, thin side moldings from the Civic Type R on the door. You toss the motor back in. We've got our Love Fab turbo manifold on. We've got our Garrett turbo in place. We've got our K-Power intake manifold, Skunk 2 fuel rail, bolted on, carbon fiber cover. Again, this is just mock-up. So this is just in here now so that uh, we can get things figured out for space and how we're gonna package all the other stuff that still has to go in the engine bay. But these are the main components that need to be here uh, for us to figure those things out. So this is not the final resting place. So you guys are gonna have to stay tuned to the next video. We've got a lot coming with this car. We're not stopping. Thank you so much for subscribing. Leave us some comments down below. Let us know what you'd like to see us do with this thing. Thanks for the thumbs up. We'll see you in the next one. Opening scene for your Civic. I'm just you, He's shaky Ricky. Civics. What was that? A Civic. It sounded like my fart in the morning. Like a Civic. Like when I roll out of bed. Sounds like a Civic going down the street. Ricky's gonna go ahead and mount up our Dash 10 bong fitting. Bong. 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 Bong? Bong. No, not a bong. Bong. Like B O N G. Bong. Like your bunghole, dog. Like bong. Yeah. Bong. Dude. Dash 10 bong. B, really B U N G. Bong. Come on, I know English. What's up, bro? You said bong. First try. B O N G. Bong. <laughs> What up, Victor? Uh, or Nate, whoever is it editing this? Yeah, yeah, Bam! Now we're not even gonna rinse it. We're just gonna put it right back in the car and send it full of metal shavings. They run better, I heard. Shaky Ricky here. <laughs> Shaky Ricky. That's you. Lynn, you want to show us the uh, VTEC on this baby? Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah. Wait, uh, this thing has VTEC? This is a K20A2. Of course it has VTEC. Yeah, oh, I thought so. this was a non-VTEC model. <laughs> nah, those are VIR systems. Those are actually pretty <laughs> fun too. So your VTEC rockers are down here. These are your VTEC cam lobes. So at a lower RPM, um, your engine is just running off of these two cam lobes. So these push down on these rocker arms, which push down on the valve springs. And so that's your non VTEC. Um, when the engine gets into VTEC at a certain RPM, you have these solenoids here that engage oil pressure, and it pretty much locks this center rocker onto these two rockers. And so you kind of think of these as working independently on their own valve springs. But when VTECs engage, it locks this whole thing as one, so it moves as one unit, and that forces it to run off this bigger set of cam lobes right here. And that's what your VTEC kick is. It's all this engaging, and you went from a small lift, small duration camshaft to a large lift, large duration camshaft, which gives you a lot more power. And that's one of the things that VTEC is really popular for, is because it has a very binary engagement. It's like climbing onto the cam is what they call it. So you just get a massive kick of power out of nowhere. A lot of fun. So good, good VTEC stuff. So this is. Um, Valve timing, cam timing, is like the VVTS system that's on this. So this actually changes, it's like BMW Venice, it actually changes the cam phasing, not the lift and duration. So this is a um, valve timing, not cam timing. That makes sense. Two different things. Too much. We'll get into that later. <laughs> VTEC. VTEC, baby! <laughs> Insert VTEC meme here.